Hi, everyone. This is Sarah Stonesay for Boylan, Digital Missioner and Manager of Operations for the Lifelong Learning Department at Virginia Theological Seminary. So I am here to walk through some of the advanced setup features for Zoom. So this is, I'm gonna repeat this one more time. These are the advanced setup features that you can find on the zoom.us website. So where can you find it? zoom.us. So this is not available as part of the Zoom app. These are only found on that website. So this is really important because I feel like we just need to direct you to the correct place so then that way you can know what the perfect place is for you to go. So I am going to bring up two different profiles. This is going to be a little bit confusing, but you, you can make it through. I'm bringing up two different profiles that you can see. And you can see on the left-hand side, when I hover, I have a basic account on the right hand side. So the basic means the free account in case you need that, that Zoom lingo. On the right hand side, I have a licensed account or a pro account. So I feel like, so I wanted to show you these two options because these are the two typical options that a lot of our faith communities are having. So when I look at some of these, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown about my suggestions for what your settings should look like and um, share a little bit more about why I would want that. Um, I would definitely recommend on both of them when you go to start a meeting that your host video is on. I would also recommend that your participant video is on. I would stick with telephone and computer audio. Unless you are having a type of meeting that you need someone to be able to access it before the person in charge comes in or the person with the Zoom account comes in, I would not recommend join before host. Um, personal meeting ID, I think it's six of one, has the, half a dozen the other. I think it's helpful to have lots of different IDs floating around. I know I've had the opportunity that by accident of where I gave the exact same meeting ID to multiple different people and we ended up having the meeting crasher. Um, again, that was totally on me. I did not realize that the meetings were gonna run together as much as they did. So you might wanna, you might wanna consider, especially if you're sharing your account, to separate out those meetings and make sure that they are, um, um, that they are ready to go. All right, so I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so you can see, so I'm just going in and making sure. Um, so personal ID, yeah, sort of six of one, half a, half a dozen the other, as I mentioned. Um, I wouldn't say that you need only authenticated users to join your meetings because a lot of us don't have a Zoom account. So I think that we need to keep that in mind when we're, when we're looking into it. Require a password when scheduling new meetings, um, not necessarily needed. Require a password for instant meetings, that could be helpful, um, especially um, if you're sending it out immediately. Again, passwords, probably not so much. Um, require passwords for participants joining on phone, I probably would not recommend, um, just because we want to break down some of those barriers of entry, um, especially for those who are, might be a little bit tech phobic. I would recommend doing an up, up, upcoming meeting reminder. Um, and so this pops up if you're using the Zoom app on your desktop. All right, here comes into some of the safe church stuff, which I mentioned in one of my earlier videos that I'll also link to right now. So um, allowing chat. So chat can be really helpful. It allows me um, to remind people what's going on, where a link might be, um, some other very vital information. But sometimes chat can be a person-to-person -person communication system that you don't always need. So just keep in mind what you're trying to do um, within, your, within your faith communities online. It might be that you're really just focusing all the energy on the screen and on the worship and you don't need that one-to-one -one chat. Or if you're in a Zoom meeting with um, young people or children and you really probably want to disable that so then that way they're not chatting back and forth with each other. So again, if it was me, I would probably go ahead and erase the private chat option. I would recommend keeping the option of, pri of chat available um, to all participants as well. 
and if we keep on going on, play sound when participants leave or join a meeting. I would not recommend that. I think that the sound is incredibly distracting and it brings people out of the current state that they're in and makes people a little bit too attentive to, uh, uh, makes people too attentive to people going backwards and forwards. I would say go ahead, add feedback to Zoom. That's totally fine. Put attendees on hold. So put attendees on hold as well as put attendees on hold are both available on the free and the pro account. I probably would recommend this for our faith communities as we enter in, especially if you're putting out a public link. We want to make sure that, um, that we really are aware of the community that we're creating and the community norms as well. Um, I think the control bar can also be really helpful, which is available on the pro account as well as on the free account. And um, and this is this is one that's really important when we think about. Um, I think the New York Times called it Zoom bombing um, of participants sharing their screen when they are not invited to. So I want you to turn your attention to both of these screens. So this is available in the free version, which is the black window, as well as in the gray version, which is the pro window. Uh, you can set it up of where the host is the only person who shares. So I'll go ahead and save that. So that's really important. So again, I can save that as, as both of them. I think that that's really important and a, an important point to make of that you can control even the finest detail within these Zoom meetings. So that way you're creating a safe space for your people. Um, so here we go. So if we keep on keeping on in our advanced settings, we have disabled desktop screen share for users. Um, I think that this is another important one where if you look into it, you probably don't need it as much. Annotation, I think annotation can be really fun, especially if you're playing a game or you're asking people to identify. So I probably would keep that on. Again, whiteboard is another really fun feature. I probably would keep that on. Um, I would not recommend that remote control be an option. What's great about remote control is that you as the host have to agree to it happening, but in order to not even have that be a possibility, I would just go ahead and uh, stop it at the pass. I would recommend nonverbal feedback. So then that way uh, you can uh, have people use their hand raise or the thumbs up or the slow down or the speed up options as part of the meetings. All right, so these are some advanced features within the in-meeting. We're still only in the in-meeting right now. I would recommend doing a breakout room option. So these are especially important for small groups or Sunday schools or conversation groups, or if you just, if somebody needs to have a private conversation that only some people need to hear, you can split them out into breakout groups. So I would definitely recommend, um, I would definitely recommend that you turn on the breakout room feature. So it looks like remote support, I think it's sometimes helpful, especially if you know that you're not going to use breakout groups. It looks like you can't use breakout groups and remote support at the same time. So it might be helpful for you to realize sort of what you're entering into. So maybe during the worship, during the worship online, you want to use remote support. So in that way you can, you can sort of siphon off those people who are having issues and then that way you can support them. Or if you know that you're going to be entering into a discussion group, you can then turn on um, breakout groups. Closed captions are great. Virtual backgrounds are totally fine. Sometimes they can be really distracting, um, especially if people keep flipping back and forth. So I just leave that up to your judgment. Um, and if you realize that it doesn't work for you, you can come in here and turn it off. So know that that is totally a possibility. Um, I would definitely recommend that you look at the rest of all of this stuff. There's a lot that's happening. Um, and I know, let's see if we look here. A lot of it is really similar. So we can see over on the left-hand side with the free account and then the right-hand side with the pro account. The one that I want to highlight for the pro account is this one right here of allow live streaming meetings. So the pro account is required in order to live stream the meeting onto Facebook or YouTube. So that is something that I want to highlight as part of the options. 
With the pro account, you do have the option of cloud recording. I like cloud recording because it then frees up some of your space. And then it also gives a platform for people to view it rather than you needing to download it, download the recording, and then upload it onto YouTube. So, but again, it just depends on sort of what, what your best practices are. Um, I do like the, uh, so if we look over onto the right hand side with the pro account, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop sharing and then reshare very quickly. Hello again. So if we look at just the pro account here, um, I would recommend using the uh, the email notification for a cloud recording and when it when attendees join the meeting before the host, when a meeting is canceled, when the um, alternative host is uh, removed from the meeting, and when someone schedules a meeting for the host. And I probably would also turn on that last one because sometimes you don't want to be surprised when all of a sudden the cloud recording is not there. You can also see that you have an invitation email on both the free account as well as on the pro account. So I think that that's an important thing to take advantage of, of when you're adding people into the meeting is that, so then that way you can, um, you can, send that out and it won't it will just be another reminder for all of your people i'm now going to look over to the meeting option so this is under settings and then oh uh, sorry stop i'm going to go ahead and look over at the recording part of our settings so you can see so recording and recording um, i would definitely recommend uh, local um, options for recording. Um, if I was going to host a youth group or something like that, I probably would not give the permission to let them record locally. So this is just a complete safeguarding option of making sure that um, I, as the as the host, really have um, really have the artifacts of the meeting and the resources of the meeting. So you can see here that my pro account, again, over on the right hand side over here, has many more options than I do over on my basic account here over to the left. So cloud recording, as I said, is a huge advantage to the pro account. It lets you, um, uh, uh, it lets you record into the cloud and then provides you a link within Zoom and then it, it's also hosted there. So if you want to, you can just let the recording live on your Zoom account, zoom.us account, or you can decide that you can download it and then upload it onto YouTube. Again, it depends on what your workflow is. And there's lots of different options here of making sure that uh, you can record gallery view or active speaker view. There's so many different options. I've never really used an audio only file, I'm not gonna lie, but I think that the chat box is really important as well as the gallery view, because I like to see everybody's faces, especially when I'm doing a webinar or especially when I'm doing sort of a group recording. And it lets me sort of like get a feeling for what the meeting is like. But again, that may not work for your community, so just keep that in mind, especially as you are going forward. So the automatic recording is totally a choice for, for you and for your community. I don't like automatic recordings because I do so many meetings where I don't really need them to be recorded. But it's another thing, like if I wanted to do it via a webinar or, some, or, or an, a, a more formalized meeting, I definitely always do an automatic record for a webinar. So in that way, I don't have to worry about it. And again, you can see over on the right-hand side, over on my pro account, they do, I do have quite a few more options for my recording. So I wanna direct our attention over to the settings function um, and then over onto the telephone function. There's one that I really just wanna call your attention to is masks phone number in the participant list. So this is available both on the basic account over to the left as well as over on the pro account onto the right. And so this just ensures one extra layer of security, um, especially if you're going live or something like that and the, the phone number might pop up. And so this just like reduces that, that possibility even more that that number will be out and be made public. Something else that I want to call your attention to is my video about safe church practices within conference calls, within video conference calls in particular. And really, I wanted to highlight these pieces after we went into the uh, advanced settings within Zoom to say, um, making sure that no person-to-person -person chat is really helpful 
no screen share other than by the host or when the host designates someone to screen share. Um, breaking down the ability for other people to record. And then making sure that you always have your rule of three within Zoom. So within the Episcopal Church, we talk about it being two adults and then one minor, or you can also have one adult or one over 18 and then two other minors. So then that way we can make sure that we're sort of establishing that sense of community and it's not an individual one-on-one. -on -one. I would also recommend that with every Zoom meeting, with every Zoom webinar, with every Zoom worship, with every Zoom prayer, or with every Zoom formation opportunity, that you make sure that you are introducing what is happening with that format. So introducing people to Zoom and saying, this is what this is, this is whose faces you can see, this is how you can communicate with me, the host, this is how you can communicate with other people. You can change everybody from being speaker view into a grid view. Um, and of course, if the meeting is being recorded or not and where it can be found. All right, so with that, that was a lot of information. Thanks for holding tight. And that was to go over the advanced settings under the basic account as well as under the pro account. So then that way we are sort of at an, an understanding about what the differences are between those different platforms and between those different levels. And the basic account is free and the pro account you pay about $16 a month. Um, so I would, I look forward to hearing what your other questions are about, about how we can gather online. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. So if you click over there, you'll be able to find some of the other, the other videos that I've done. I look forward to hearing what else you think would be helpful. So please reach out to me. Um, again, my name is Sarah, and I look forward to hearing from you soon.